Okay, so 2.4, we're going to talk about real zeros of polynomial functions, okay? Real zeros of polynomial functions. So what we're going to do is we're looking at, we're basically trying to find the zeros of polynomial, okay? One of the things we're going to do is we're going to divide the polynomials by other polynomials and see if they are divisible, okay? Basically, what we're trying to accomplish is if it's divisible, if I can divide something by something and the quotient is zero, that means that it is really, you can call that out and use that as a zero. So let's go ahead and see what we can do here. Let's see how we can do this. Let's see how we do division, how we're going to divide. So what we're going to try to do is we're going to try to take 2x cubed plus 5x squared plus 8x plus 7. And we're going to divide this by 3x plus 2, OK? If I do this, and it actually is divisible, if it's divisible, so if this is actually divisible here, okay, if this is divisible, that means that the, you would have a quotient and you'd have a remainder and the remainder would be zero. What that means is that this guy here is divisible by this, which means that this would be a zero or a part, a root of this equation of the top of the numerator, okay? So let's see how we do this. So the way we would do this really is we would revert back to our good old friend of long division. We're just going to do long division now, OK? 3x plus 2. And then we're going to have 2x cubed plus 5x squared, 8x plus 7, OK? So I want to get 2x cubed here, right? So in order to get 2x cubed here, what do I need to multiply it by? Oh, it's 3. I'm sorry. This is 3. Let's make sure I get this correct. 3x cubed, 5x squared, 8x squared. So to get 3x squared, 3x cubed, what do I need to do? I need to have x squared here. So when I multiply this to this, I get 3x cubed, and then I get plus 2x squared. You know, just as you would do a long division, now you're going to subtract that out. So this goes away, and you're going to end up with 3x squared. Now to get 3x squared here, I'm going to have to multiply this by x. In other words, now x times 3x is 3x squared. x times 2x, so it's going to be 2x, right? Well, actually, I'm going to bring the 8x down first. I'm going to do the multiplication and get that. I'm going to subtract and I'm going to get 6x plus 7. Now to get 6x, I'm going to have to multiply this by 2. I get 6x plus 4, right? 2 times 3x is 6x. 2 times 2 is 4. I subtract out. Now I should have a remainder of 3, okay, which means that this guy is not divisible. I mean, this guy here is not entirely divisible by that because when we when you end up happening is this is your remainder. So this guy is your remainder. And this guy here is your quotient, right? Your quotient. So what you're going to end up doing when you're in a, what you end up finding is this. You end up finding is this guy here is going to be equal to x squared plus x plus two the quotient plus the remainder, plus the remainder is 3, right? So this is what you get. So this is the quotient, and this is the remainder, OK? So when we do this, we're going to end up with this plus the remainder. We did that by doing long division, OK? So if you go to page 197 in the middle, there is a blue box there. If you want to go ahead and read that.
Okay. So if there are no more questions, let's go ahead and move on. Okay, so let's go to example number one. Example number one, the long division. So if we use long division to find the quotient is divided by that. So in this one, we're gonna actually have, we're, so we're dividing, what, two x to the fourth plus or minus x cubed, right? Minus two. Now we also have to leave placeholders here for the x squared, right? And the x, and then we have, is it minus two? It's minus two. Okay, so we have to have placeholders here, right? And we're gonna have two x, we're dividing this by two x squared plus x plus one. Okay, so just as we did before, to get two x to the fourth, and I have two x squared here, so I'm gonna have to have x squared and multiply that out, I get two x to the fourth plus x cubed plus x squared. Now I subtract this, minus two x cubed. Then I'm gonna have what? Minus x squared, right? And so now to get this, I'm gonna get what? I need to have minus two x. So if I do that, I, or minus x, I guess, minus x. So my, so if I, Multiply, I get minus 2x cubed minus x squared minus x, right? Because I'm, I'm doing minus x, right? I subtract it out. This goes away. This goes away. I end up with x minus 2, okay? So now I have x to the squared and I have x. So this is basically your remainder here, right? This is your remainder. This is the quotient. So in other words, 2x to the fourth minus x cubed minus 2 over 2x squared plus x plus 1 is the quotient x squared minus x plus I have a remainder of this. Right? So this is basically what you end up with right here. This is going to be your answer. Okay, all right. So let's put the page. Let me see that. Okay, now in the middle of page 198, we're gonna talk about the remainder and factor theorems. Okay, so let's say that I have I did the long division and I actually got a zero. Okay, so what does that mean? What does that actually mean? So if you go to example number two, let's go to example number two. Example number two. No, that's what the, let's we'll talk about the remainder theorem first. If polynomial f of x is divided by x minus k, then the remainder is basically f of k. Okay. So let's say that I had f of x is equal to 3x squared plus 7x minus 20. And A says I want to find the remainder when I divide this by this. OK? So since this is k, the remainder theorem says that my remainder is going to be basically when I put 2 in here, OK? So what we have here is 3 times, this would be 4, 7 times 2 minus 20. So I'm going to get 12 plus 14 minus 20, which is 6. So my remainder should be 6, OK? So let's go ahead and verify. So let's go ahead and verify this. Well, so our remainder was six, okay? So let's go ahead and verify this by actually doing the long division. X minus two 
3x squared plus 7x minus 20. I just want to show you what this really means, okay? So to get 3x squared, I'm going to have to multiply by 3x. 3x squared, I multiply by a negative 6x. I subtract, I get 13x minus 20. Now to get 13x, I'm going to go by 13, 13x minus 26. I subtract out, I'm going to get the 6, which I got before. Okay, so it actually works. But the reason why it actually works is that now if I, so if we go back and use the, the notation that we just used, I'm going to say that 3x squared plus 7x minus 20 divided by x minus 2 is equal to the quotient 3x plus 13, right, plus x minus 2 over 6. Okay, so if I went ahead and multiplied everything by x minus 2, what do I get? I'm going to get this goes away. And over here, I'm going to have multiply this guy by x minus 2. And this guy is going to be 6. And this is a true statement, right? Because this now can be represented this way, plus 6. Right? So when I put x minus 2 in there, what's actually happening is that when x equals a 2, this guy here goes to zero, right? This guy goes to zero because I'm putting in the same number over here, x equals two, and I get the remainder of six. So that's why that, that remainder theorem works, okay? Uh, B and C, I'll let you do on your own. It's not it's worth the same thing. You're just going ahead and you're gonna go ahead and replace X with the negative one and the negative four, okay? Okay, the factor theorem. So what happens if I had a, I had a function, okay, and I divided it by x minus k, and what happens if the remainder is zero? There's no remainder. That means that x minus k is a perfect fit for this function, right? In other words, you can factor the polynomial by x minus k, and there will be no leftover, right? There'll be no remainder, okay? So let's see, let's see how we can do this by the one we just did, okay? So one of them was x plus four on the equation that we had before was what? Three x squared plus seven x minus 20, okay? So let's go ahead and do the, use this, let's go ahead and do the remainder theorem first. If I do the remainder theorem, what do I get? So f of x is equal to 3x squared plus 7x minus 20. And I'm going to put that, the remainder theorem is this. So the remainder theorem says that f of minus 4 would be my remainder if I divided it by this guy. So I put that in, what do I get? Here I get... 4 times 4 is 16, times 3 is 48. And over here I get minus 28. Over here I get minus 20, which is equal to 0. Okay, so the remainder is 0, which means that this function here should be divisible or factorable by this. So let's go ahead and see if that's true. Okay, we're going to go and actually try this out. So I do 3x again, 3x squared plus 12x, divide it, or I'm gonna <laughs> subtract, so I get negative 5x minus 20, negative five, so I multiply by negative 5x, negative 20, ta-da, I subtract out to zero. In other words, what I can say is that 3x squared plus 7x minus 20 is equal to x minus 4 times 3x minus 5. Okay, and this is really what you're doing when you are factoring. When you factor, when you, when you do factor, remember when you do factor, you say, you should go, okay, I need two numbers, I multiply by 3 to get 1, 
and then you get here. So I'm gonna go four and five, 15 and four, that does not work. Four and five, I get 12 and five. So that works, right? So I'm gonna go plus 12, and this would be negative five. So it's gonna be three X minus five on the top. And then X plus four on the bottom. So this is your factoring, right? And you're actually factoring it. And guess what? You get the same result here. Okay? All right? Okay, so that's that. Now we're gonna go ahead and revisit a good old friend called synthetic division. Okay, and you guys have done this before. You guys have done synthetic division. Okay, so let's say that I'm gonna divide uh, synthetic division. So the one that they're doing here is we're dividing 2x cubed minus 3x squared minus 5x minus 12. So those of you following along, we are on page 200. We're on page 200. And we're going to divide this by x minus 3. We're going to divide this by x minus 3. Okay. So if you remember correctly in synthetic division, okay, we took the coefficients of the top one, 2, <clears throat> two negative three, negative five, negative 12. And I'm going to do the synthetic division. This, right? And we're going to do three because we're trying to divide it by x minus three. The three comes from here. What makes this guy equal to zero, right? What makes this guy equal to zero in the bottom, the divisor. What the divisor is equal to zero, right? So we're going to put three here. So synthetic division. So the first thing is we take the two all the way down. We multiply the three times two and bring it over here. It's a six. Okay. Then differently than long division, we go ahead and add these two. Becomes three. Now I multiply the three times the three over here. I get nine. Add these two together, I get four. Three times four is equal to 12. Zero, I have zero remainder. So I have a winner here, I have a winner, which means that this guy here is not is divisible by x minus three. But not only that, it actually tells me what the quotient is. The quotient is what's left over here, right? The quotient is what's left over here. This would be the constant term. This would be the x term. This would be the x squared term, right? So in other words, this guy here is, well, if you divide it out, you get 2x squared plus 3x plus 4. Okay, and then you were going to have a zero here, right? Because that's the remainder here. In other words, since this is true, I can actually say that this guy is true, meaning that the original polynomial that was on the numerator is actually factorable by x minus 3. I have found a factor of this function or I have found a solution to this thing, right? This, because the solution would be x equal to three, right? If I put x equal to three in here, this has to go to zero because this guy goes to zero and this side is zero, which means that this guy should be zero also. If I put three in here, all right, let's go ahead and try that. If I do that, I get three cubed, which is 27 times two is 54. 3 squared is 9, so minus 27, minus 15, minus 12. Okay, so if I add these three together, I should get 54. I get, if I add these two together, I get 27. 27, 27 is 54. Yes, indeed. This is 0. Okay? All right. 
So that's how you use synthetic division, okay? Synthetic division, again. So let's go ahead and do another one so that we can go ahead and see how this works. So let's go ahead and, okay, I already did that, huh? I already, so I already did example number three. Okay, all right, we're good. So we'll stop right here and we will continue on with the rational zeros theorem in the second part, okay?